Isaiah 28, verse 1. Verse 22. Now therefore be not mockers, lest your bands be made strong, for I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a consumption even determined upon the whole earth. Hmm. Is going to be in a whole lot of different ways. Spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. And it's also going to be geographically. So knowing that there's a consumption coming and a consumption is, it's, it's almost another word for a debilitating disease, a, a deterioration. A, a, but the, the word the Lord used in the Bible is consumption. This is Isaiah chapter five, verse 14. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. And their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. And the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Then shall the lambs feed them in their manner, and the waste places of the fat ones shall strangers eat. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin, as it were, with a cart rope, that say, Let him make speed and hasten his work, that we may see it, and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come, that we may know it. Woe unto them that call evil good. And that put darkness for light, and light for darkness. That put their bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and the prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty in drink and wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink. Which justify the wicked for reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoured the stubble and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness and their blossoms shall go up as dust because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore, as the anger of the Lord kindled against his people and he has stretched forth his hand against them and has smitten them, and the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And he will lift up an ensign to the nations from far, and will hiss unto them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come with speed, swiftly. None shall be weary, nor stumble among them. This is his army. None shall stumble or sleep, slumber or sleep. Neither shall the girdle of their loins be loose, nor the latchet of their shoes be broken, whose arrows are sharp, and their bows bent. Their horses' hoofs shall be counted like flint, and their wheels like a whirlwind. Their roaring shall be like a lion. They shall roar like lions, yea. They shall roar and lay hold of the prey, and shall carry it away, safe, and none shall deliver it. In that day they shall roar against them, like the roaring of the sea. And if one look unto the land, behold darkness and sorrow, and the light is darkened in the heavens thereof. Listen, listen, listen. The thing that came to me while Jeanette was talking, I already had these scriptures, but the revelation that came to me was this coronavirus is a prophetic event. It's not just about a little disease that somebody had in a laboratory in a Petri dish and oops, oh well, there goes the world. No. The coronavirus is a prophetic event. Listen to this carefully. We know that as those who are staying close to God are going to be the safest going through these dangerous, precarious times. But those that are not, 
they better watch themselves. It's not going to be a pretty picture. The closer we come to the end, the worse it's going to look and the worse it's going to feel. Listen to this. In the coronavirus, there was a bacteria, as we all know, that spread all over the earth. And while it was spreading, we had no knowledge. It was totally unbeknownst to us. And after about two or three months, that's when we got wind of it, when people started dying. Now listen, listen. The Bible says the same way that it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the last days. People will be eating and drinking and doing business as usual and giving to marriage and, and, and going to honeymoons and doing all the normal stuff of daily life. And when they least, that's the one thing I noticed, when they least expect it, stuff's going to break loose. When they say peace and safety, there'll be sudden destruction. Listen. You notice how everybody started washing hands. Every time they touch something, they're washing hands. They're wearing masks. Now, this is not about the coronavirus, so listen carefully. This is a prophetic event. All this sanitizing, over caution, keeping things clean, keeping surfaces clean, deep disinfecting, sanitizing, cleaning, washing, protecting, masking, glove, gloves, covering, all of that. That is a picture of what we are supposed to be doing in our spirits. Listen, the level of our righteousness can no longer be happenstance, can no longer be haphazard and half-stepping and and, 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 and righteous this day and unrighteous the next and loving Tuesday and hateful Wednesday. We have got the most important part of our life has got to be our character. We have got to draw close to God now. If we don't have anything to say to God, sit in his presence and play praise music. Think on them if you can't do anything else. If you have nothing to talk about, think on them. Think on his goodness. Read scriptures. Get to know his heart. Get to know what's on his mind. Get to know him. Because I'm going to tell you, if you're not careful... And this is for everybody, saved and unsaved alike. If we get too careless with our walk with the Lord, it will be easier in this season for Satan not only to attack, but for things to start going helter-skelter in our lives. So we must keep the blood of Jesus on everything in our lives. We must keep our mouths from speaking guile. We must keep guile out of our hearts. We must keep guile out of our minds. How do we renew our minds? By the washing of the word of God. How do we keep our hearts cleansed and sanitized? By prayer, seeking God. Lord, Check my heart out. See if there be any wicked way in me. We have to watch ourselves. We cannot go to the beggarly elements of our normal routine lives that we left behind us. We get nervous. We get antsy. We get lonely. We get depressed. We get frustrated. No, we can't go to the bottle. We can't go to the cigarettes. We can't go to sex with our buddy down the street. We can't go to the old things we used to do, what I call the adult pacifiers of life. We cannot go back to that. We have got to the, as to the same extent, 
or even beyond the extent that everybody is being extreme with the sanitizing, the cleansing, the washing, the purifying, the disinfecting, sterilizing of instruments and items. We must be about that business in our spirits, in our personal lives. Where nobody's looking is when we should be the cleanest and the holiest. I'm not talking about how many times you take a shower a day or a week. I'm talking about your spirit, baby. You can be the clean, you could be so squeaky clean, a petri dish can't pick up a, a bacteria from your fingertip. You could be so squeaky clean, but if your spirit is raunchy and foul, yeah. Baby, you are a nasty thing in God's eyes. You got to be careful. A lot, listen, there are too many loose living Christians in this world. Christians, born again Christians. You're living loose, foot loose and fancy free. Yeah, but you're using your freedoms for the wrong reasons. For you to sit there and call good evil and then call evil good. And you're lining up and becoming in agreement with the world. Ooh, that's a dangerous, that's a dangerous place to put your feet on. That's a dangerous foundation to stand on, you guys. We have got to be very careful. We've got to be accountable to each other and not be offended if somebody calls and says, you know, I was really burdened about you. You doing okay? You, you, uh, you know, would you like some prayer about a little something, something? Somebody might be picking up through God's love on the fact that one of you might not be on the total straight and narrow. You might be tipping, slipping and sliding. And God may have that person call you. Don't get offended. Know that it's God, not a nosy saint. These people don't call you all the time getting in your business. You know it ain't about nosiness. God is cleaning his house. The Bible says judgment begins at the house of God. If we barely be saved, then what about them? You hear me? We have to be very, very careful. We have to sanitize. We have to wash. We have to disinfect. We have to examine, make sure that we put all the contaminants in the trash and leave them there. We're not dumpster diving here. This ain't a dumpster diving life. And some saints are living their lives in the dumpster. They're steadily pulling up some old junk that they should leave their hands off of. Do not touch the unclean thing. We have got to be careful in this day and age. There's a consumption that's going around the world. It's an, it's, I'm not just talking about a physical disease. Consumption is anything that's debilitating, that's deteriorating, that's consuming away. Be very careful in through here. Where do you put your feet? Where do you lay your body? What do you what do you ingest through your ears, through your eyes? Hmm. Yeah. Some of you are having struggles with your physical desires because of what you're looking at. Hmm. Out of sight? Out of mind. Think about that. Out of sight? Out of mind. Some of you are fighting real hard not to go back to that stuff. That's a blessing and that will keep you. But you have got to be extra, extra careful with yourself in through here. You've got to live your life almost as if you're living through a, mm, what is the word, the word I'm looking for? A mine. What do they call those mines? Those, those bombs, you know, where you can walk 
and then your foot hits something, you hear a click, and you know it's over, baby. Right. So you have to be a minefield. Thank you, Lord. So you have to be careful and live your life as if you're walking through a minefield. Be very careful where your next feet take, where your next step takes you. Be very careful what turns you take, what decisions you make. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your path. Be very careful. Be very careful how you ask God for mercy, and then you're short of giving it. Be careful about that. God extends mercy to you. Somebody else does something that ticks you off, you ain't got no mercy for them. Be careful with that. Be careful before you find yourself casting judgment. He said he will bring low those that are high and he will bring up those that are low. So you may see somebody at the bottom of their game. How you treat them is also something God will judge. You got to keep all of that under God. Even if you're not doing a good job, keep it in God's face. Lord, help me. I'm not doing that good of a job. Help me me. Whatever you do, you must be at this point, not your worst enemy, but your biggest critic. You must. You have to scrutinize every motive of your heart. You have to scrutinize every intention of your mind. You have to scrutinize your pride, go through it with a fine tooth comb. You have to be very careful. It's the little foxes, the ones we think are insignificant, that spoil the vine. And we are the vine of God. We are a part of Jesus Christ. We're part of his vine. He is the vine. We are the branches. So we have to make sure not to invite little foxes in. Don't play with the fox. Leave the foxes alone, baby. Leave the little temper tantrums alone. Leave the little, uh, uh, the, the, the baby things. I can't even think of the word. Pacifiers. Thank you, Lord. Leave the pacifiers alone. Leave all your little worldly crutches alone. Leave them alone. Throw those suckers away once and for all. I believe God is telling me right now some of you have been visiting some old toys. Throw them suckers away and stay as far away from them as the east is from the west. Touch not the unclean thing. You know, there was a nurse that did a, uh, an example of how easy it is to pick up bacteria. <clears throat> and she had gloves on. And she put paint on her hands. And she would touch different surfaces. And then she cleaned the paint. She changed gloves and put clean gloves on. And she went back and, you know, you know, like washing your hands. She went back and touched those surfaces that she had touched before. And there was paint still on those surfaces and it got on her hands. And she was showing how easy it is to pick up contaminants. Just pick them up. They're drawn to us like, like flies are drawn to garbage. And she was showing how careful, how mindful we must be about not spreading bacteria. We must be mindful. Don't pet somebody's sins. Don't, don't hide their sins and agree with it so you can be liked. You know what the Bible says about certain sins. Don't buddy up with anything that Satan says is cool. If Satan says it's cool, baby, trust me, it ain't. He's the father of lies. So my thing is be very, very careful. Walk the straight and narrow. Don't turn to the right. Don't turn to the left. Keep your eyes focused. Keep the blinders on. The ones that the frontlets in your eyes, like the horses, the race horses, 
They have those frontlets, so they're not distracted by peripheral vision. Do not give your peripheral vision any play. I had dreams this week. You talk about dreams of perversion. You wake up, you rebuke those suckers, go back to sleep, call it a day. You don't give in to those dreams. <laughs> no, you ignore them. When Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. That was not just on Saturday, on Sabbath. That was not just on Sunday. No. It's every day, every moment of every day we have got to live holy lives. We have got to love. We have got to be at peace. We have got to forgive. And we've got to confess and fess up when we know we're wrong. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up higher and higher. But if you don't humble yourself, God will humble you. Oh, he knows how to humble you. So be very careful. Some of you are highly gifted. Some of us are highly gifted. And we've got to be careful not to get the big head. Thinking we're special. We're the special chosen ones. <laughs> no, no, no. No, some of God's most gifted is some of God's most screwed up. I know I'm screwy. I know it. Nobody has to tell me. Y'all don't know half of how screwy I am, and I ain't telling it. Don't have to tell all your business. But do it with God. He's the only one that won't use your honesty against you. He's the only one that won't turn your confessions into a slap in your face. He's the only one that won't rub your filth in your nose. He won't remind you constantly of all the failures and all the mess ups and the hiccups. He won't do that because love does not inspire guilt. Love does not condemn. And God is love. So, I'm not going to make it long. I just want you to be mindful. See the corona as a prophetic event. Everything they're saying to do on TV, on the computers, on the emails, and all these little texts they're sending out, all the reminders on the walls, see that as this is my time to line up with God, to clean up shop to get my house in order. This is my time to humble myself and take a, sh I'm, I'm going to sound real country, take a show up bath, baby. A spiritual bath. Brush your teeth, brush your tongue. Swish with Listerine. Gargle for hours if you have to, but clean that mouth out. Clean that attitude out with the washing of the word. Renew your mind in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Because you have to remember, there are blessings. He said, for my people, it shall be well with them. We have to remember, for those of you who are trying, for those of you who are doing everything you can, God's got some serious blessing. He's got some serious encounters waiting for you. He's got some appointments and all of a sudden you're going to be in God's presence in ways you've never been before because God rewards our efforts. He doesn't just put down a bunch of commands. He rewards our efforts. He sees them and he's looking and he's booking and he rewards. God bless you guys. Stay in God's word. Stay in his presence. Think on him. Praise his holy name. Sing praises. Listen to scriptures and messages that will lift your spirits and keep you. Keep you wanting to go in the right direction. Keep yourself inspired. Keep yourself in the most holy faith. Amen? Amen. God bless you. I hope that helps somehow. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, you bless us. I pray you keep us. 
I pray, Father, that you help us to hunger and thirst after righteousness. I thank you, Lord. I bless your holy name. I pray that you bless all of God's church of line, all of God's church of love people online, and that you bless all of the YouTubers that that watch these these uh, videos that are seeking God. I pray, Lord, that you bless your people and protect them, protect us, warn us, keep us, Father, from all dangers. In Jesus' name I pray. And Lord, I pray that you cancel every assignment of the enemy against all your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. That about unforgiveness. A lot, a lot of Christians are going to find themselves in hell because of unforgiveness and bitterness. There you go. You, you said, uh, you know, it reminded me exactly was right on point. Don't be asking God for mercy. And then you turn around and don't extend mercy because remember the story in the Bible about that man that owed all that debt and the, the king forgave him and then he ran into somebody that owed him way less than what he owed and he, he beat the man up and threw him in jail and everything and then got back to the king and he said, you wicked servant, how could you do that? After I forgave you all that debt, you wouldn't do it, that, that on to your brother? So they, he had him thrown in jail, and see, God said, that's what I'm talking about. You better watch it. You got to all watch ourselves, and you know, examine your own motives. Like, why did you post that on Facebook? What are you doing? What is your intention? Be your own police officer. Look at yourself. Why are you doing that? The Lord told me I was getting ready to post something. He said, why are you posting that? He said, I love the Lord. He'll arrest you in a minute. He said, why are you, why, why are you doing that? Um, I just wanted to put it up there. He said, no, you're not. You know it's going to get a rise out of so-and-so. Oh, man, yeah, you right, Lord. You right, you right. Don't do it. This is, yeah, it's real. Like you said, washing other hands and being extra clean and checking everything and making sure you ain't got no dirt behind your ears and your... <laughs> Wait, I ain't going to go all the way off of that, but you know. Yeah, because the heart is our hearts, our hearts, including it's myself, desperately wicked. wicked. Yes, who can know and it? Who can know it but the Lord? Desperately wicked. Our hearts are desperately wicked. Mm -hmm. And we need, the, the, the sooner we realize that we are depraved without Jesus, because I'm going to tell you, without Jesus, there's a whole lot of stuff I would do. Oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff I would be doing. Me and too. I know that. Me too. So. So we need, we don't get it twisted. Remember, it's by grace we're living this life. It's by His blood. It's by the Holy Ghost. Because if God put we withdrew any of His His Spirit from us, we would be out there doing stuff that we was doing 20, 30 years ago. Wondering how the heck did we get back here? Because yeah. that's where we would have been without Jesus. Thank that's you. That's it. I'm out. Peace out. That Jesus is name. so true. So true. Right. Thank so you, Lynette.